Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, December 19th, 2023. Let's get into it. So uh, I made a weird video today. I hope you're going to like it. I was just out hiking and uh, I was trying to give all my thoughts about all kinds of different things. And then I come home and, you know, I always check out. I was going to get some clips off of RT or maybe some other channels and uh, and add them to the video. But uh, I was like, you know what? There's just nothing that I can add. You have got to watch the latest redacted video on uh, YouTube or Rumble or wherever you get redacted. Uh, my God, they, they, it was like they made my video for me. <laughs> They talked about all the same things that I'm going to do in my video, except, you know, they've got all of the footage of, of clips from all over the place, and all I could do would be filming their clips, and I was like, no, let's just promote their video. Now, I cover it in a different way, so you might want to, but mine's just lip service to, to everything. But let's just run down the uh, the list here. I I will get into, well, redacted, the, the, the first story was, I didn't realize how many Christians live in Gaza. And the, the Israelis, the Zionists, let's not call them, they're not Jews, they're Zionists. Uh, they're killing the Christians just as fast as they're killing the, uh, the Muslims uh, or the Palestinians, uh, whichever way you want to look at it. And uh, in fact, they've destroyed a few of the uh, archaeological Christian churches that used to exist in Gaza. Uh, they're exterminating the Christians in Gaza. And so Redacted goes into all of that. So if you're a Christian, you know, maybe you might want to think about this Israeli extermination of the people in Gaza. You know, it's not just about Muslims. It's not just about Palestinians. It's also about Christians. And to be honest, I didn't realize there were so many Christians that lived in Gaza. Or these, I mean, they were beautiful churches before uh, the Israelis destroyed them. And then there was a story uh, that they showed horrible. Uh, Israeli snipers actually sat up on a building and shot uh, people inside a Christian church. Uh, they killed two women and uh, injured, a, well, uh, crippled probably quite a few others. Uh, so don't tell me that they're not just extermin they're exterminating everything, exterminating everything in Gaza. And that was one of the things that I'll talk about in my video when, when we get to it. So that was the first thing on Redacted. And then they went into the um, the capital um, sex scandal, uh, where I guess two guys decided they were going to have sex and, <laughs> and film it, and then post it on social media. Oh my God! Uh, and and boy, I tell you, I'm sure that the Democrats don't want to cover that. Uh, and I talk about that in my video. It's it's funny, funny as hell that I come home and here I am watching it on Redacted. I was like, son of a gun. Uh, you know what? I but I'm I'm not totally against that. I. Uh, I, I hate to admit, you know, as a young man, I was a juvenile delinquent, and I did some crazy stuff. And I remember uh, one time in this meeting uh, of, on a conference table, uh, or in a, in a conference, on, you know, and, uh, and and so I was pissed, man. My I, I got shot down in, a, in you know, because what you do in a... a when you meet with the bosses and everybody's sitting around the table, you know, you're presenting your ideas, they're presenting their ideas... And then, uh, and then somebody just just degrades you. So I had a young woman that I was well, I wasn't really dating her at the time, but uh, she, boy, I tell you, she's good looking too. So we went in, and I, I, I'm going to tell you right there on that conference table, I was, I was thinking about that, you know. So anyway, I don't, I don't want to get crazy with you, but I'm just telling you, I'm not, you know, all pure uh, Christian. Uh, I, I did that, and so these guys having sex in the Capitol building. I don't know, no big deal to me, but uh, I, and luckily there weren't cameras, <laughs> and I didn't film it, so let's just put it that way. I, I you know, I, I got to admit these things, because otherwise, you know, you can't condemn others for things that you've done, you know, and so, uh, I don't know, but I tell you what, it was a good time. Uh, so we've got uh, Russian troops have been deployed to uh, the Syrian border. Uh, you won't hear about that in the news, in fact, I've seen nothing. Nothing on YouTube, nothing anywhere. I don't even know where I picked up that fact. I think it was on X. Uh, yeah, it looks like Israel's trying to block people from using the uh, Telegram. Oh, yeah, this was another story on Redact. Ukraine snatching soldiers. 
uh, off of the streets. And now it's starting to appear in the mainstream media. I think the New York Times and the Washington Post have covered the fact that they've been sending troops. Well, it's been going on for a year. <laughs> and they're just now reporting on it. So imagine, you know, you're, you're going to your job, you're a bartender, or, you know, you're just going to school, and all of a sudden these military guys show up, and they grab you, and you're fighting them, you know, and they, they throw you in the van, and, uh, and then, you know, next thing you know, you get, they put a rifle in your hand, and they say, go fight the Russians. That's what's been taking place in Ukraine for quite some time. And we're just now, the, the American public is just now starting to learn about it. And this is why I was telling you that I was against... Uh, uh, what was going on in Ukraine. Israel killed, uh, well, there's 80 journalists that have been killed uh, by the Israelis in the war. 80 journalists. Uh, don't tell me it's not indiscriminate bombing. or in, And some of them, they actually said they were, at, Al Jazeera, uh, those journalists, they say, were targeted by the Israelis. Uh, they, did, they were killed intentionally. So, and of course, in my video coming up, we'll talk about three hostages that were killed. Uh, we've got 20,000 dead Palestinian Ukrainians Ukrainians and Christians now. I, I learned that today. Oh my God, I didn't know there were so many Christians there. Uh, 14,000 homes destroyed uh, destroyed in al Daba. Well, I think that was the church uh, that was bombed and destroyed. Uh, an archive. Um, so there you go. Uh, by the way, they're not holding the, uh, the Bethlehem um, Christian uh, festival uh, in Israel. So they're going to be losing a lot of uh, tourists that won't be coming in there, but for, for security reasons. Uh, 50,000 is the number now in Gaza that's been injured. That's a that's a number that I pulled from somewhere. Oh, well, and yeah, of course, Yemen shuts down the Red Sea. Now, I do talk about in the video, I want to talk about Yemen for just a minute. And so in the video, I said, I don't think the Civil War in Yemen is going on anymore. And so I came home and I did a little bit of research. And let's learn a little bit about Yemen. And uh, this is from CFR.org, Global Conflict Tracker. And uh, it says the fighting between Houthi rebels and the Saudi coalition. And by the way, you have to understand what was taking place in Yemen was another proxy war. So just like the United States funded uh, Ukraine to fight the Russians, the Saudi Arabia and the United States were fighting, uh, well, I don't know what you want to call them, proxy soldiers to fight uh, the Houthi. Uh, but the Houthi won. More or less. I'll just read to you what this says, and you form your own opinion. So, uh, that backs Yemen's internationally recognized government has largely subsided into 2023. And this is what I said. Uh, I didn't think there was much fighting going on anymore. Dialogue between the Houthis and the Saudi and Saudi Arabia. And notice they say Saudi Arabia. They're not saying the Yemen government. They're saying Saudi Arabia. So, Saudi Arabia was on the other side of the conflict. Uh, along with Iranian and Saudi normalization has provided hope for a negotiated solution. However, talks have yielded little progress and have been punctuated by violence. The Southern Transitional Council, STC, has also renewed calls for an independent Southern Yemeni state, uh, complicating peace prospects and Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, AQAP, attacks have surged. Meanwhile, the humanitarian crisis has not approved, improved. 21.6 million people need aid, including 11 million children, and 4.5 million are displaced. And then I'll just read a little more of the background. Yemen's civil war began in 2014. Imagine the same time that the United States pulled off a coup in Ukraine. Uh, you know, it looks like they were kind of working all around the world, weren't they? The Democrats. Shiite rebels with links to Iran and a history of rising up against the Sunni government took control of Yemen's capital, the largest city, Sana'a, demanding lower fuel prices and a new government. Following failed negotiations, the rebels seized, and that's why they call them the Houthi rebels, uh, Houthi seized the presidential palace in January 2015, leading President Abad Rabu Mansour Hadi, boy, what a name, huh? <laughs> Holy shit. And his government to resign. Beginning in March 2015, a coalition of Gulf states led by Saudi Arabia launched a campaign of economic isolation and airstrikes against the Houthi insurgents. I was I were you like me? 
I remember hearing about all these airstrikes that were taking place in Yemen, and I didn't really ever put two and two together. I never got into this geopolitical stuff until now, you know, and, and so because it's having such an impact on us, I'm trying to, to, to put my money where, where I'm going to survive everything that's going on. But let's just keep reading with the uh, with U.S. logistical and intelligence support. So that's what I was telling you, that it was the Saudi Arabia and the United States against the Houthis. In early 2015, after escaping from Sana's Hadi, rescinded his re uh, resignation, complicating the UN-supported Transitional Council formed to govern from the southern part of Aden. However, a Houthi advance forced Hadi to flee Aden for exile in Saudi Arabia. While he attempted to return to Aden later that year, he ultimately ruled as president in exile, just like we did in Venezuela, where we tried to put in a, a, a president, and uh, he tried to rule in exile, and it didn't work out. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of the article, because it, it, it's very long, and you can go do your own research on Yemen. But uh, that's about it. Let's, uh, let's just get into the video. I think you're going to enjoy it, and I... Uh, I'm all over the place in this video, so understand, you know, I try to help you, I try to talk about all kinds of stuff so that you can just get the rundown quick. Peace out. Stay free. Let's continue to talk about how the uh, media manipulates words and how they present things to you. I was listening to the uh, radio and, uh, and they said the uh, Iranian-backed Houthi rebels. And uh, think about the context of how they're terming that. Number one, rebel implies that there's a civil war taking place in Yemen. I don't think there is. I'll, I'll let you know in the, if I find out there is. So that gives them a kind of a lean of illegitimacy, right? It wouldn't be, uh, you could use the phrase Yemen fighters. You could use the name Houthi fighters. You could use the term the Yemen military, for example. See, I'm seeing, you see how everything gets phrased and, and how they, uh, because what they're trying to say is, you know, these guys are just a bunch of ragheads, uh, you know, rebels out there, uh, you know, doing stupid stuff. No, no, they actually have a purpose. They are trying, and they say they are only targeting any vessels that are going to Israel. So they have a very specific purpose in mind. They're trying to stop the extermination of the Palestinians. That's their cause. And you will never hear on the radio the Yemen fighters are stopping ships from going to Israel to end the genocide in Gaza, for example. You know, wouldn't those words, people probably be shocked if they heard that on the news. So I wanted to weigh in on Senator, I think it's Senator Dick Durbin. And I've uh, been seeing a few clips of, of him. He's a traitor. I hope you understand that. We've got traitors in Congress. And uh, he was proposing, because our recruitment numbers are low, you know, rather than get the wokeness out of the military and uh, and get some real testosterone-wielding men in there to fight like you have in Russia, uh, he's proposing putting illegal aliens in the military. Do you understand how dangerous that is? These people have not sworn allegiance to the United States or the U.S. Constitution. Okay, so when you put them in the military, they're not going to care about you and me. If they're told to go into a city and kill a bunch of U.S. civilians or go into the country and take on, let's say, the Proud Boys or the Oath Takers or whatever group you want, they are not going to hesitate. And they're going to be loaded for bear because they've got all the military equipment of the United States military. The next thing he proposed, which is another incredibly dangerous, and the, they, I, I think this is a more diabolical scheme you know the illegal aliens uh, coming up you know by what do we got like 20 million here in the united states they were proposing turning them into cops so now you're gonna have peep men young men walking the beat who don't give a shit about you or me they just they just serve uh their their globalist masters and they'll do whatever they're told they're not there to fight crime they're there to kill u.s civilians so I thought, you know, this was the Democrats changing the, the demographic of the United States to get more votes. I think it's much more diabolical than that. I think we're seeing the true reason we've got 20 million or more illegal aliens 
in the United States. Leave a comment below if you think it's incredibly dangerous to have illegal aliens in the military and as police officers. I want your opinion. Also, I always put in these videos tips to save you money or things I think might help you. The first one is, uh, and I already own some and I've lost money on it right now, is uh, Rumble. R-U-M is the ticker symbol. Uh, RUM, which I think is a cool ticker symbol. Uh, but uh, they, they've got some litigation pending against uh, Google. And it's looking like they're going to win. And that's going to be a huge, huge windfall for Rumble. So right now, last I looked, I put in a bid at like $4.80, I think $4.80. So you might want to take a look at it. You know, don't chase it. We're going to have a stock market crash. So you, you might be able to pick it up a lot lower than that. It might get cut in half uh, when the stock market crashes. But, uh, but that is a stock for you to think about. The other one that I, I you know, because I weighed things in. I, I tell you, I used to be subscribed to Paramount. And uh, that's because of the Star Trek stuff. Well, I don't know, last six months, is, there's nothing nothing new on there that I wanted to watch. I found myself going to Tubi. Tubi's free. And uh, if you sign up, you can even pick up where you left off. I watched, uh, what was it? Um, ah, geez. When I think of it, I'll add it to the video. It was a, a good series on Tubi. I really enjoyed it. And then also Netflix. Uh, I subscribed to that. But I was going to unsubscribe because they raised their price again. I said, to hell with this, man. I'm not going to do it because uh, they, they've gone woke on everything. But uh, so then they, uh, they offer a commercial version where you have to watch commercials. I don't mind watching commercials. What I do is I get on my phone and I look at X while the commercial's going on. And the thing I like about Netflix now is that they're not inundating you with commercials. You only get one every now and then it really doesn't interrupt uh, whatever you're watching in fact i just watched the movie yesterday because we were having bad weather here in florida i watched Sazam, and uh, it was cute and there was nothing woke in there you know no uh no gay stuff or anything like that uh, it was just uh it was just a cute movie and i like cute movies and uh you know good versus evil type of thing and uh, anyway, so there is some good stuff on Netflix, and that dropped the price down to I want to say between seven and eight dollars a month. I don't mind paying that to, to get to occasional movie. You think about it, you go to the movie theater one time in the month, and you've paid for Netflix. I wanted to weigh in on uh, the Republican National Committee and how I don't think you should ever give them a dime. You know that's hit it up, I, and I want to. I hope I get the name right, Rona Romney. McDaniels. She's a rhino. She's not a Republican. In fact, she works against the Republicans, the MAGA Republicans for sure. So she's a Democrat in disguise in charge of the Republican National Committee. Now, what does that tell you about the rest of the committee that they won't get rid of her? They're a bunch of rhinos too. So if you make a contribution to the Republican National Committee, you're making a, a contribution to the Democrat Party. Okay, so if you're going to help out Republicans, I'd say get involved on a local level or, you know, if you want to help with the campaign, like uh, maybe I do some volunteer work for Trump or hell, even give Trump's campaign some money, but feed it directly and pick the candidate that you hopefully stand behind. They're all going to betray you most for the most part when they get to the, uh, to the Congress. But if we can get uh, candidates in there that don't betray us but so much, you know, you're never going to get the perfect candidate unless you run yourself and you're an honest person. And those are few and far between these days. And the uh, the other one that got me, <laughs> I don't know, the couple quick stories was the one, they had that satanic uh, uh, a memorial in the Iowa Capitol. And the guy, uh, I guess the guy came in, he was pissed off and he beheaded the uh, satanic statue <laughs> that was in the Iowa Capitol. Uh, and in Iowa, a Republican state. Of course, you know, she endorsed, I think, Nikki Haley, the governor did. So that tells you Ohio is not really uh, a deep red state. They're, they're more of a purplish, if you want to look at it that way. The other one that got me was they're tearing down a Confederate, and I say Confederate, it's really a, a memorial in the uh, Arlington National Cemetery that was dedicated to... to peace between the North and the South back in, I think it was um, 
what is it, 19, uh, 20, no, 1919 or something like that. I think it was about the time that the statue was erected, well after the Civil War. And it was meant to be a reconciliation uh, between the North and the South. That, by the way, remember, Democrats were the South or the or the uh, the party of slavery. So just, just reminding you of that. So the, actually the, the statue was dedicated to the Democrats, more or less. But uh, see, the thing that worries me though, is we're taking away our history. And this is what the Bolsheviks did when they took over Russia and they destroyed uh, the Russian nation, resulting in, in I think it was 60 million or 20 million deaths uh, that they went through the Great Purge because they wanted to get rid of all their political enemies. Uh, so you see a lot of Bolshevik uh, history repeating itself. Very dangerous. Very dangerous here in the United States. I forgot I wanted to add something else. Uh, I went ahead and pulled the trigger and I don't really need them but I just wanted to give you some ideas this Christmas season of how you can help whatever causes you want to help. Uh, I don't give to the Salvation Army. I'm not saying that they're all corrupt, but when I was, uh, I witnessed a lot of uh, stealing in the, in, from the Salvation Army out of a town that I lived in after I gave them some stuff and people would come in and pick it up for pennies on the dollar when it was worth a hell of a lot more. And you know that that was an arrangement between them and, and the, uh, the people that were gonna go out and make a lot of money selling that stuff. But uh, so what I did was I bought, because uh, I like Mike Lindell. I think he's, you know, he's for election integrity and he's doing a good job. So I went ahead and bought two MyPillow 2.0s. Uh, I'm going to let you know, I'll do a review on them when I get them. Did I really need any pillows? Not really. I mean, I could, I got plenty of pillows, but uh, if these were, you know, if they're a lot better, you know, I, that's what I do is a lot of times I buy something that I like better and then I give my old stuff to charity. So the pillows that I got, I'll give to, you know, a homeless shelter or something to, to help them out. Just saying how you can vote with your money to help out the world. I wanted to also talk about the uh, fact that you, hopefully you're seeing a pattern of how the Democrats get us into war after war after war after war after war around the world. So, you know, they they have been responsible for everything that's gone on. So let's let's just take the war in Ukraine. Okay, they, they put a coup, pulled a coup off in Ukraine and installed a puppet uh, actor, Zelensky, in, in, the, in the role of president. And then uh, they, we've been sending them arms and we armed them up to the teeth. And then, because uh, Russia had said, you know, we will not accept Ukraine's entry into NATO. Nit means nit. So what did they do? They kept poking the bear. They kept, uh, they brought Finland in. Then they brought Sweden in, then they brought in the Baltic states to NATO. Ever getting closer to the Russian lines, poking the bear, poking the bear. They wanted a war. And so finally, you know, Putin said enough is enough. We're going to war. And so that's what they did. Well, of course, they call it a special military operation. Now, they've never declared war. I hope you understand that. It's just a special military operation. Thank God, because if Russia declared war, it, we'd probably all be dead now. So anyway, uh, thank, thank God we got Putin in charge. At least, you know, he's, he's pr pretty, uh, pretty tame about how he's gone about that war and he tried to keep the civilian casualties to a minimum. But, uh, you know, when you look back, of course, George Bush, George Bush was a rhino. He was not a Republican. He got us into the Iraq war and Afghanistan. So there's another Democrat that got us into war. If you look back at FDR, there's a lot of evidence that F, well, FDR was poking Japan, and basically, uh, I can't remember, there were some economic uh, uh, things that he, that he did to the Japanese that was basically gonna, gonna put them out of business. So he knew that they were gonna attack, and that's what he wanted, and that's how he got us into World War II. So I'm just saying, when you look at it, so what's gonna be, of course, and then, of course, 9-11, there's a lot of video about uh, questions about how that took place. How could the uh, FBI and the CAA not know that those uh, Arabs were getting trained up and that that terrorist attack was going to take place and how it was going to take place? There's also speculation that those buildings came down too nicely, that uh, you know you, they should have toppled from one side to the other instead of just imploding, which 
made it look like a controlled detonation. A lot of speculation around that event to get a, the United States into another war and also pay, pass the Patriot Act. That was a, that's a terrible thing for the country to have that Patriot Act in place. In fact, they just passed the new Pfizer uh, laws again. The Republicans did. But I heard on the radio today that they're work, at least they're working on that. They said they're going to take it back up again in June. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you can only do so much so fast. So I'm, I'm still hopefully believe in Mike Johnson. We'll see where it goes. Uh, he's, definitely, he's definitely better than Kevin McCarthy. Let's put it that way. So, uh, so what's going to be the next flag event to get us into the war, a regional war in the Middle East? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I think they're going to do something. And I think they're also going to do something to get us into war with China because we're building those bases in the Philippines. So now we're provoking China and also we're sending weapons to Taiwan. Taiwan's just another part of China. It, it, people don't understand that. In fact, we've recognized the fact that Taiwan is part of China. Uh, and yet they want to get us into a war with China. So you see how the Democrats want to wage war all around the world instead of taking care of the people here at home? If you ask anybody in the United States where Ukraine is on the map, they're not even going to know. In fact, they probably don't even know the war's going on in Ukraine. <laughs> no more. Or that we're over there getting ready to bomb Yemen. Uh, or that Israel is exterminating the Palestinians. You know, it's just, so people in this country just don't pay attention. These are yours and my tax dollars that are getting pissed away while we got homeless people on the streets, people starving to death. I'm just saying, it's, it just infuriates me. So while I got some light, I, that's why I wanted to make this video to see how good this Samsung Galaxy S23 is. Check that moon out. That's an Ultra HD at 30. Pretty cool as the sun sets. I love being out at this time of night. Let's get another little night clip here. I want to look at this on the computer when I get home. I'm swinging around. I thought it was because you got the moonlight right there. Wanted to get another shot of that. And then if you really look back into the dark right here, pretty wild, huh? All right, I'll add this to the video just because I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you could take advantage of, you know, a good deal on this Christmas for, this is the Galaxy S23. Now they're coming out with the S24, just to let you know. Um, so, you know, you're jumping right in and that's why the S23, they're offering some really good rebates on it right now. Unless you gotta be on the bleeding edge of technology, but you're gonna pay, you're going to pay full price for that S24, I guarantee you, at least for a while. And that's going to be over $1,000 for sure. As I continue to make night video, I did want to talk about another thing. was the, uh, the Israelis, uh, there are three hostages that escaped. I don't even know how this made the news. Uh, somebody must have gotten a, uh, a Palestinian of some sort got the video, and uh, they couldn't deny it. Otherwise, I don't think you would have heard about it. But they shot, well, the three hostages, I guess they escaped somehow, or maybe Hamas let them, set them free. And they were approaching the Israelis. They had their shirts off to show that they weren't wearing, you know, a bomb. Uh, and then also they had a white flag and they just gunned them right down. So what I'm telling you about the, the Israeli mode of operandi, mow the grass is what they call it, is shoot anything. It doesn't matter if it's a civilian, a kid, a woman, anything that, that comes towards them. Unfortunately, they killed three of their own in this case. And somehow that story crept out. I don't know if you heard about that. But if they're going to gun down their own hostages, you better believe it had been if a Palestinian woman, they would have shot her too. Maybe the death of those three Israeli soldiers, I just listened to mainstream radio, or right-wing radio if you want to call it that, although this is more of a, a centrist, uh, I won't give you his name. He actually reported on the fact that there's 20,000 dead Palestinian civilians. I couldn't believe it said it on the radio. I was like, holy shit. They're actually reporting on that now. Get more night video. I thought this was a cool look with the sky behind these trees as I'm on my way back to the car. All right. All right, I came up with the idea of putting the phone to the side of my head. Hopefully the audio will come out on this. But anyway, I wanted to talk about the Catholic Church for just one second. Now they're gonna bless same-sex uh, couples. Now, they didn't say they would actually marry them. They just said they'll bless that union. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I don't really care if somebody's gay, whatever they want at their house, but I don't think that religions should be embracing that uh, behavior, whatever. 
Uh, that's just not what uh, what I am as a Christian. Uh, you can be gay and be my friend. I can. I got no problem with that. But uh, it doesn't matter. In fact, I've I've had gay people sleep at my house. It didn't 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 bother me in the least. But anyway, so um, the other one. I'll, since I'm on religion, I wanted to talk about the Russian Orthodox Church. A lot of people don't understand, but most of Russia is Christian. And I want to say it's as high as 75 to 80 percent of people uh, promote the Russian Orthodox religion. Now, you've also got the Muslims, you know, the Chesnians, uh, they're part of uh, the Russian Federation. And uh, so they're a deeply religious country. And, uh, and so they were talking about, they were looking over here and they said, they, you know, they just can't identify with America anymore. And when you look at what just took place, oh, and by the way, the other thing that Russia said they're going to do when they're done uh, beating the tar out of Ukraine is, uh, well, number one, they're going to denazify. So the, the Banderas or the, uh, the Nazis, a lot of people like to call them, that ideology will cease to exist in Ukraine. Now, they... They might try to go someplace else, probably come to the United States would be my guess. Uh, <clears throat> we seem to welcome Nazis here. But uh, so that's the first thing that they're going to do. And then they're going to bring back. See, a lot of people don't understand Christianity or the Orthodox Church is banned in Ukraine. So all you Christians out there that want to give money to Ukraine, you're giving it to a country that doesn't even respect your religion. So Russia, you might want to give your money to Russia because Russia is going to bring back the Orthodox Church. They're going to rebuild the churches that have been burnt down because the Ukrainians are burning them down. There you go. Is that what you want? All you Ukrainian uh, lovers out there? So uh, I thought that was very interesting. And then, of course, what was in the Russian news was they showed that uh, transgender, uh, I don't know if you saw it, the Christmas party at the White House. That was the most... Well, part of my French, I got to say a cuss word. That was the most fucked up thing I've ever seen in my life. I was like watching this going, this is in the White House? I mean, it looked like some sort of satanic thing. I mean, I was like, oh, my God. And then, of course, there was another video on RT of uh, some, uh, uh, some women that were tweaking at the White House. Oh, my God. Every time you turn around. And then, of course, they flew the, uh, I don't know if you saw, the, the rainbow flag in place of the American flag at the White House. I mean, the, the Democrats have gone whole hog overboard here. Uh, I, I'm expecting to see, you know, satanic rituals in the White House. They probably they are. They probably are. You know, you had that, uh, that uh, couple that was, just got caught, a gay couple, in, uh, in one of the, the staterooms. I don't know how we're hearing about that. I can't wait to see what this video looks like. If it's just dark, I apologize. At least you can hear me. And, uh, but, yeah, they just caught them. Luckily, they got fired, but that guy was right next to Biden uh, during his campaign. Uh, the one that was having sex with another guy in the stateroom at, at the Capitol building. <laughs> I mean, if, where were the Capitol Police? Where were the, where was the cameras? I mean, I, I, how the hell did he get in that room? It's supposed to have been a locked room from what I understand. I don't know, man. Things are cut, just wild every day. Watching the world burn. Another view of the moon. Kind of a cool, cool look there. Just wanted to get that on the video. One other thing, uh, in the video I talk about some investment opportunities for you. And I wanted to show you a good company. So occasionally, this is a Christmas copper round. I assume it's copper. It doesn't say in the, in the note. From SD Bullion. And this is what you do to keep customers coming back. And they're the best company that I've found. I'm not getting paid for this. I have no paid promotions. Uh, but I will tell you this, he sent me this nice little Christmas card, and it says, Thanks be to God for his in indescribable gift, 2 Corinthians 9.15. And then on the back says, From S.D. Bullion, Merry Christmas. I would like to personally thank you for your support of S.D. Bullion and wish you and your family a very cheerful holiday season. And comes from Dr. Tyler Wall, the president. So this stuff means a lot. You know, when you're dealing with a company... And we're going to talk about other companies that I'm buying stuff from in the video. All right.